彼は連邦を共に守る仲間です職務を超えた関係については私から言うことは何もありません Hey everyone, this is Nitro In this video, I am going to be talking about the way to build Elestrial The hot elven waifu Whose voice actor is the amazing and brilliant Tree of Longivity Now, this video will assume that you have an extra Uller's bow to give to your Elestrial because that is when she truly has the most utility. Um, with, an with the Uller's bow giving her 3 attack range, it allows her to do things like attack Hugin and Munin when they are split apart while taking a counter attack. So, in this clip of the Hugin and Munin fights, you see Elestrial who has an Uller's bow and she is 3 tiles away from one of the two Hugin and Munins and at 3 tiles away she can attack and not get take any counter attack from the opponent. So this is why Uller's bow is her best in slot piece of equipment. So without the Uller's bow in Kruf, I see very little reason to build her because she would just have a 2 range, she's doing ranged attacks and you know, at two range, you'd be better off using mages like Bozel and Lana to strike than Illustrial. So, with that mentioned, let's begin by talking about the required characters for Illustrial spawns. And she is by far the easiest bond unlocking SSR character in the game. Because to unlock her fourth bond, you need Matthew. To unlock her fifth bond, you need Almeda. These are characters you start with right from the very start. So as long as you do her Gate of Fate battles, the five of them, she's guaranteed to have all of her bonds unlocked. So with that said, let's now talk about Illustrial's talent. And the talent has two effects. The first effect is with every one block moved, Damage dealt and crit chance are increased by a certain percentage, and there, it's up to a max of a certain percentage. So, it is 1% at 3 stars, 2% at 4 stars, 3% at 5 stars, and then 4% at 6 stars. Meaning, the maximum also increases accordingly. So it's a 5% at 3 stars, 10% at 4 stars, 15% at 5 stars, and a maximum of 20% damage dealt and crit chance increase at 6 stars. In a lot of ways, you can think of it that talent as being very similar to Leon's, right? Increasing damage. The only difference is Leon needs 3 movement to trigger his effect, while Illustrial needs 4 movement to trigger. And in truth, Uller's bow combos very well with this because with the Uller's bow having 3 range, you can guarantee every single attack you do will have that 20% damage increase. Granted, of course, Uller's bow does decrease your damage by 10%, but it kind of balances out overall. The fact that you can trigger it for the maximum value every single time. Alright, so with that mentioned, let's talk about her second effect of her talent. The secondary effect is when passing through defensive terrain, you gain a certain number of chances to negate movement penalties. So it's one chance at three stars, two chances at four stars, three chances at five stars, and four chances at six stars. What this effect does is basically she can, the number of chances means the number of tiles she can move through, to my knowledge, right? So that means at six stars, she can move through four defensive terrain tiles with her five mobility, right? So let's say she can move through four forest tiles and then one grassland tile successfully with her four mobility, with her five mobility, sorry. If she has to move through five terrain tiles, then she can only move four tiles, which is still insane right effectively she can more or less ignore terrain entirely because it's very rare for you to have to move through five tiles of terrain so 
a very strong talent overall. You know, one effect allows her to basically ignore terrain. The other effect is increasing her damage so that she can hit hard and potentially one-shot targets. And with that said, let's now talk about her best class. Generally speaking, her best class is definitely Wolf Rider Commander because it has 5 mobility and 2 range. Her Ranger class has 3 mobility and 2 range, which is a huge drop in mobility in general, right? Um, can you use that other class? Of course, but is it worth using? Not really. Um, I should also mention though that Illustrial, her uh, her max stats at level 60. So let me just quickly bring that up from the Wiki Grisser page. So if we take a look at level 60, Wolf Commander has 545 attack, whereas Elestrial as the Ranger class has 520. So that's a big attack difference as well, which is another reason why you should definitely 100% use her in her Wolf Commander class, right? So now let's jump back into the game. So best class, guaranteed to be Wolf Commander. And now let's talk about her skills, right? And generally speaking, with Illustrial, you want her to be able to potentially one-shot targets which means you're going to bring attack skills, as many of them as possible. Right? So she has two attack skills at with two range. The first one is the one she starts with, Neutralizing Fire. It attacks a single target, dealing damage equals to 1.25 times damage. And when you are on defensive terrain, deals fixed damage once before the battle begins, and the damage is equal to one times the hero's attack. So pretty solid attack skill overall. Her other attack skill comes from the Ranger class, and it's Emerald Crusher. Attacks a single enemy, dealing 1.3 times damage, with a bonus when battling against flyers. And before battle, it dispels a maximum of 3 debuffs. You gain 10% bonus damage for each one debuff dispelled, and after battle, dispels all debuffs on the target. So, pretty solid skill, you know. it. It has an odd trigger effect where you, your character, Illustrial, needs to be debuffed to have increased damage. But nonetheless, quite a solid skill. And the oddity is, I've been wondering about the secondary effect where it dispels all debuffs on the target. I'm wondering if that actually dispels all buffs on the target. But, you know, this, I don't, I truly don't know, but I just thought I would mention it. If it does dispel all debuffs on the target, it's a disadvantage to you. So that's why I found that part a bit odd. In any case, let's continue. So, generally speaking, those are her two two-point skills that she brings. And then the third skill, which would be the one-point skill, you generally make it roundabout. Because roundabout increases your damage dealt by 10%, allowing her to have a higher chance of one-shotting targets. Right? And it also allows you to attack and retreat every other turn. She also has another one-point skill that is quite useful, Natural Warding, where when you're on forest, mountain, or grassland terrain, your soldier damage is not reduced in melee battles. And when entering a battle with a melee attack, damage taken is reduced by 20%. So why this is useful is because it gives you the ability to melee attack enemy mages and archers so that you don't take any kind of a real counter-attack damage. Right. Realist I mean, it's hard to fit in though, however. Generally speaking, if you have an Uller's Bow, you can totally ignore this skill because you can attack the enemies after you range. So you're not taking any kind of counterattack anyways, right? If you were to bring it, I would generally say give up on one of your attack skills, but keep roundabout because the attack and retreat is just too important, especially in terms of getting in, staying in your tank's guard range. So. Generally speaking, if you really need to bring the skill, I would say replace maybe Emerald Crusher or uh, Neutralizing Fire. Next. One thing I should mention is soldiers from the training ground, right? And she gets three soldiers from the training ground right from the start. The first one is the Catapult, 
The second one is the Gargoyle, and the third one is the Dragoon, which are pretty solid soldier choices. The interesting thing here about the Catapult is, if you have the Catapult and you combo it with her Uller's Bow, she can actually potentially have 4 attack range. The drawback of this combo is of course she gets reduced to 3 mobility, but <laughs> and it, in very many ways it's a gimmick setup, because Uller's Bow reduces damage by 10%, and then the Catapult will reduce damage by another 20% at level 10. So you're not likely to one-shot targets with this kind of setup, but you know it could be fun as a gimmick for PvE content. Now, so in addition to these three soldiers, she also unlocks from her classes the Demon Hunter, the Bone Dino, the Dark Elf Sniper, and finally the Holy Pegasus. So she has a pretty good mix of cavalry, ranged characters, and flyers. For her soldiers. In terms of the hero boost, it starts off as 10% hit points, 10% attack, and 10% defense. Her third bond increases attack and defense on soldiers. So the final soldier boost is 20% hit points, 35% attack, 35% defense, and then 10% magic defense. In terms of her best soldier, with Uller's bow, it is she truly doesn't have a best soldier. You change the soldiers based on the enemies you face. Okay. For example, within Uller's bow, her general bread and butter soldier does remain the demon hunter because she can attack a three range with it, right? However, that's not her only choice. With the Uller's Bow, she can use melee soldiers and have those melee soldiers attack at 2 range, right? So, in terms of the absolute highest attack value soldier, it's actually the Bone Dino. Because the Bone Dino, as long as they're at level 10 and they are... Uh, they actually offer a 45% attack increase as long as their hit point is above 80%. So that's why Bone Dinos offer her the most attack value out of any soldier that she has. Right? Compare that to Demon Hunters that get no attack increase at all. Right? She can also, however, let's be frank, not everyone will have Bone Dinos leveled up to level 10, so she may also choose to use the Dragoons, right? because Dragoons at level 10 offer an attack and defense increase of 30%. And they're actually shared with Elwyn, Right? And a Lancer Elwyn for PvP is likely to have the Dragoons leveled up to level 10, so that's another soldier option that is very viable for her. Now, both of these soldiers have a drawback, the Bone Dino and the Dragoon, which is th that they are cavalry class soldiers, right? and they will do no damage at all to Lancers because they are cavalry class. It's So that is a huge drawback of using them. Uh, as long as you can make sure you're not attacking enemy lancers, you know, Bone Dinos and Dragoons are arguably her best soldiers if you plan to fight at 2 range. Otherwise, so they are very usable, but you have to keep in mind that they do nothing to enemy lancers. So, in that case, you may choose to bring the flyer soldiers that she has access to, which are the Gargoyle and the Holy Pegasus. They do different things. The Holy Pegasus get a 50% damage reduction when attacking, while the Gargoyles, as long as their hit point is above 50%, they get a 30% attack increase at level 10. And then when they're below 50% hit points, they get a 30% defense increase. There's also a drawback to using Flyer Soldiers on a ranged character though. And the drawback is that Flyers have no attack animation for 2 range. What that means is, in, in effect, if you use her to attack enemy ranged characters, the soldiers will have to tank the attack from the enemy soldiers first, and then only the survivors of the enemy attack will fight against the enemy. So they don't get to counterattack until they've been attacked already. That's actually a huge drawback, especially if you're using, let's say, a last girl to attack an enemy archer class character, because archer class characters counter 
flyer soldiers. So your flyer soldiers will probably get annihilated without getting to attack whatsoever. Be making her attack only have Elestrial do damage. So that's the drawback of using these flyer soldiers, right? Against archers and mages, they don't get to attack until they get hit. So there you go. But you can see, generally speaking for her soldiers, I would say Holy Pegasus is the most useless one. So your choice of soldiers is Demon Hunter, Bone Dino if leveled up, Otherwise, Dragoon is a viable option, and Gargoyle. And of course, Catapult if you want 4 range for whatever reason. So, with all her soldiers covered, let's move on to talking about her gear and enchants now. So, as I mentioned, this video does assume that she has the Uller's Bow, so we're going to say Uller's Bow is her weapon. Now, with the Uller's Bow, you for her armor helmet and accessory you can basically use any armor helmet and accessory as long as they're level 50 and they're giving her good stat increases and the reason for that is because Uller's bow giving her extra range means she should never take any kind of counter attack meaning her armor helmet and assess her armor and helmet don't truly matter the only thing that really does matter would be the accessory, which you want to have maximum attack value, which is usually, let's say, the Slayer's Emblem. If not a Slayer's Emblem, then the Winged Shin Guard. If not a Winged Shin Guard, then a uh, Judge's Talisman. And of course, with that said, of course, the best in slots are the usual Archer and Assassin equipment, which is what I have on Zerida, for example. You want Last Rites, King's Crown, and then, well, a Slayer's Emblem rather than the Overlord's Badge. But the problem there is she's quite low prior on the low priority list for all three. You know, as I mentioned previously, Last Rites, you generally want one for Juggler, Listelle, and your Assassin first. Right? Same with and then King's Crown. Good luck having that many King's Crown that you can give one to every single character. So that's why I keep saying any kind of armor and helmet is fine for her. Yeah. It would be great if you can give her the last rights in King's Crown, but they're not absolutely required. Right. So now, finally, let's talk about enchants. Okay. The interesting thing here is I actually recommend you enchant her Uller's Bow with Breeze. And the reason for that is because she's probably going to steal gear from someone else for the Ancient's Call battle, right? For the armor, the helmet, and the accessory. I like If I were to use Illustrial, I would steal the Last Rites and King's Crown from Zerida, which both have the Breeze enchant, and then I'd probably steal Elwyn's Slayer's Emblem, so that she had, which also had the Breeze Enchant, right? So that gives her her best in slot gear for the Ancient's Call fight. And all I would need is to enchant an Uller's Bow with, let's say, plus 15% attack, and we're done. However, if you were to actually build a set of gear entirely for her use, the better enchants would probably be the following. Uh, the first option would be Meteor, right? Because Meteor, as long as you're attacking units with hit points above 8, 60%, all damage dealt after entering battle is increased by 20%. So that 20% damage increase can be huge, right? The other option is, of course, as usual, Full Moon. Because Full Moon gives all offensive and defensive stat increases of 10%. Comboed with the two piece effect, that means effectively Full Moon is giving her plus 15% attack. How do these ones compare in general for general use? Well, Full Moon would be a much better enchant if you're fighting against enemies with high defense value, right? Because damage is generally com the comparison between your attack and the enemy's defense. By comparison, Meteor would be the better enchant against enemies with a low defense value, such as mages and so on. 
So which enchant you want is kind of up to you. I generally, per I personally, if you were going to build a custom set of gear for her, would recommend Full Moon over Meteor, but that's just me. So, with all that said, that concludes my video on the way to build Illustrial. So I hope I hope you found this information useful. Um, I sh the one thing I should mention is, you know, Elestrial with her 545 attack value, ultimately, it's, it is quite high. So she can hit very, very hard, but it's not as high as, say, you know, let's say Luna, because Wind Spiral replacing her attack value can generally lead to a much higher overall attack value than Elestrial can get. And the other thing about Elestrial is, it can be pretty hard to get her up to 6 stars because for any damage dealer, you want them at max star level so that they have as high of an attack as humanly possible so that they can one-shot targets, right? And Illustrial may be a character that's very hard to grind up shards of given all the other characters that you need to grind up for Ancient's Call and so on. So, on that note, once again, I hope you found this video useful, and Nitro out.